Today's episode guys is really pretty straightforward. We are going to hunt for APT39 in Splunk. I am going to show you what are the hypotheses, how you can build your hypothesis and what are the steps that you need to perform to prove your hypothesis as like true positives or false positive. Okay, we are going to demo in real time what is going on at the Splunk and how you can build your hypothesis and how you can prove it. Okay, so without a further ado, let's jump into our session and let's see what's going on. Okay, guys, so today's presentation is like not made by me. Um, so there was an older presentation made by Splunk people. So Luis Ferreira is one of the uh, Splunk sales engineer. So the demo and the scenario he has covered in one of his old uh, Splunk webinar. But I thought to explain and include this in my uh, threat hunt series and explain in my own words um, so that the things can be more useful to you and you can learn something out of it as well, right? Okay, so uh, moving on to the actual scenario scenario what we are actually going to cover so we are going to hunt for apt 39 um, that has been seen in wild quite some few years ago and this is quite pretty active in today's days as well so the industry that it targets as the tourism industry so this is the page where we are building our hypothesis okay so what is the exact thing that we are trying to cover okay so uh, as you can see so we are building the hypothesis based on the web shell and uh, microsoft iia server okay so if you see in mitre framework also they have used lot of web shell techniques and lot of uh, things procedures so let me show you quickly over here so if you see here so they have have used uh, axpx pi and there are a lot of other softwares as well and they are known heavily for utilizing application layer protocol uh, web protocols to uh, exclude them and try to exploit them specifically okay so now if we are trying to target that of course so what exactly we are trying to do so we will assume that there is a microsoft iis service uh, and server that is running and that has an vulnerability okay so uh that that's basically hypothesis how it actually works right and that particular vulnerability has been exploited by the attacker and attacker has got into the network okay so now how you can identify whether your uh threat hunt scenario on top of that it's an apt39 so miter says that process monitoring can give us a real good hint okay so now there is a well-known process that is called called w3wp.exe which is the parent process of microsoft iis okay so now miter says that if there is a process that is getting pawned which is suspicious and by correlating with the microsoft iis this w3wp.exe now if we see this particular process as a parent process for any other processes that is getting spawned which is behaving anomaly or which is giving some anomalous indication that is one hit for us okay and thus we can prove our hypothesis that this apt39 is inside our network and doing some nasty work okay so our target all we already know so threat actor we already know so we are building the hypothesis based on hunting um process execution and suspicious process based on w3wp.exe and we will be leveraging sysmon and exact telemetry data that is already present in the endpoint so um as you know right sysmon engulfs and lot of endpoint telemetry and all those data is already getting fed to sim uh, which is splunk and we are going to build and we are going to hunt live in splunk now okay so i am going to directly refer um, the presentation of luis ferreira and i am going to explain in my own words before we start and before we actually show uh, this is the basic uh, aspx pi that i was talking about and that has been basically used by by this threat actor so we will leverage the same thing uh, basically the thing has been done so there is an IA server has been taken up and this aspx pi has been hosted on that so considering that if you are an attacker and you have already got access to that particular box and you have uh, installed this application into it right so we are leveraging that okay so the first thing first uh, on this server we have hosted the axpx pi and that is so we need to access that okay so considering this 
website has been already taken up by the attacker so there is a command shell so that needs to be accessed with admin credential and admin prompt so that only the attacker can access that one as well okay so we are already inside that system and what we are gonna do we are going to run some arguments some basic enumeration stuff just to see what is going on on to that particular box okay and we are going to hunt for the same thing that is getting done at the back end of that particular server okay so if you see in the argument so we are going to use net user command so that is giving us the all of the user that is present in the box and you can see administrator and innocent user uh, being present on the box we next we are going to see some dir so what is the current working directory we are on and what is the um, uh, fashion of that and next we can run the version to see what is the microsoft windows version that is running so these are fun basic stuffs okay and last we'll run the ip config stuff as well just to see what is going on what is the ip address of that particular machine okay so we are basically running some only few steps that is very much uh, important from an attacker's perspective and the thing is that this is getting done at the back end so the data will be real time shipped to uh, splunk to understand how we can prove our hypothesis okay so in real time the attacker uh, could have run something else also using the same ispx okay but you need to uh, see what is actually going on okay but the process will be exactly the similar one okay so now what is going on so we'll go inside the, our splunk and we will see how we can uh, go with that particular hypothesis okay so the first thing is that obviously we know that we are working on the windows data set right and whenever we ingest that particular log using sysmon so we have uh, used uh, the windows sysmon uh, ingester okay so we will include the same windows indexed and we will look for the index as windows okay so that is how the data is being shipped in uh, our splunk yeah so you see the data is loaded now and now if you see i am just uh, we are going for last 60 minutes because the enumeration has been done just now um and again so the next thing is that how you can do the next step okay so we know our source types right so there could be different source but for this tutorial and for this one we are concentrating on sysmon okay so we don't need security log so we are filtering based on the sysmon operational data log okay now the next thing we want to go for the host okay so which is the particular host we need to look for this tutorial and this webinar was given on a particular host machine um, but in your real time scenario there could be other host uh, also being present okay so be mindful on that so as you see there has only one source so we can filter out that but in the real time you can just map it to the different kind of source right so that you can get all of the visibility and all of the things that is going on okay so what is the next thing so now just remember to map your hypothesis in each and every step okay so our hypothesis was to uh, identify process execution right so now in our windows log we can identify and if you if you see the interesting field section over here there are a lot of interesting fields that has been populated already by splunk so now we can go and directly look for uh, the process execution or process creation okay so if you go to the event description tab you see there are different kind of values we look for process creation okay so that means if a newer process being created so that can be identified through this particular search so that search has been executed and you see there are seven events that is process being created okay so now moving on to the next one so next one once we have identified the process creation we would link to look for the parent process okay so again if you go for the interesting field section you will see that there are parent process and uh, uh, parent argument being logged on so we just need to see the parent process argument over here so now if you see parent process GUID parent process exe name you see three different process but our hypothesis is w3wp.exe so we are choosing that particular uh, parent process so again we have filtered out four events out of seven where parent process is w3wp.dxe right now what is miter says miter says if a process being spawned up 
from these wpw w3wp.exe as like a, a command prompt powershell that we have seen in mitre framework that could be a point of suspicion for us okay so now we need to go and we need to look for uh, any child process that is being run as like a command prompt or something similar so you see there are command.exe only available in process execution tab so we can look for that one inside process tree right so now there are only four events and as you see now we have identified w3wp.exe has spawned a four process inside that which is cmd.exe being used okay so now if you see the command line section over here you will see that the exact four parameters that we ran from xpxpy you will see that the exact thing that is being run over here as well right so our hypothesis is proven over here so we have run all of these commands now if an attacker has or if the attacker is doing the similar thing on the endpoints so utilizing the same hypothesis uh, or the same process or the same query in your splunk you can map to the uh, uh, or you can prove even your hypothesis as true right so now um, once you if you want to operationalize this hunt scenario in a real-time manner okay so what you can do so this is a manual hunt right so uh, next time once you are going to the uh, same field what you can do you can simply create a table okay and you can put it in your dashboard and stuff like that so that whenever you are going next with the same hypothesis you can readily make and you can build it on top of that okay so we are simply piping the data in depending on the stats uh, by count so how many number of time the command has been run and next the host so that you can get the data out of your host next uh, you you need to go for the execution and the event parameters okay so the event description what is the event description because that is the important uh, every information is being pulled up in your event description okay and the next thing you need as per your uh, process is the parent process or uh, the the child process right because w3wp.exe is our parent process being run in this particular process okay so that thing is also important so uh, just give us a minute so where this page loads yes so now if you see the parent process uh, uh, it is also a enumerated field over here right so executable for parameter you need to go on and then parent process executable command line that is being run on that particular uh, count and you can sort it with anything like count date or for this particular one we can do it as count now if you simply load it up you will see that exact thing that we have just now we have seen and you are seeing that exact thing has been populated over here right so cmd.exe was run using the parent process w3wp.exe and you can see the command line how many counts are getting uh, pushed from that uh, from the user agent that we have also run right so so that that is how uh, you should calibrate and you should create your hunt hypothesis and that is how you can definitely go to the splunk data set and you can identify apt39 okay so this is not only limited to particular one hunt but for today's tutorial i wanted to refer uh, the splunk webinar and i wanted to show you guys how basically things are done right so uh creating this particular episode from scratch would have taken me a lot even i i, I might not have so much of log sources right so i just uh, leverage the same webinar uh, that is used by splunk but what is the takeaway guys so you learned how to create the hypothesis what are the important things that you need to look for in apt39 that is required and the last thing you learned how to go in splunk and how what are the data set is re required and what are the steps you need to take through and how to process the search in splunk so that you can prove your hypothesis as true positive or false positive right so yes guys so that's pretty much it for today's episode i hope you have learned something and if you have enjoyed the session please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe black pearl channel so that you can keep getting all those information to your way as soon as i upload a new video okay so yeah stay healthy and stay safe i'll catch you guys next time